you have launched in extremely successful companies, you have helped others, you've invested in companies. Can you give advice on how to start a successful company? I would say have a problem that you really, really, really want to solve, right? Something that you're deeply passionate about. Um, and honestly, take the first step. Like that's often the hardest and, and don't overthink it. Like, you know, like this idea of a minimum viable product or a minimum viable version of an idea, right? Like, yes, you're thinking about this, like a humongous, like super elegant, super beautiful thing. What, like reduce it to the littlest thing that you can bring to market that can solve a problem or that can, I, you know, that can help um, address a pain point that somebody has. Um, they often tell you, like, start with a customer of one, right? If you can solve a problem for one person, then there's probably yourself gonna... or some other person. Right. Pick pick a person. Exactly. It yeah. could be you. Yeah. And that's actually often a good sign that if you enjoy a thing, right? Enjoy a thing, or you have a specific problem that you'd like to solve. That's a good. That's a good end of one to to right. focus on. Right. What else? What else is there to actually? So step one is the hardest, but how do you... <laughs> <laughs> there's other steps as well, right? Um, I also think. Like who you bring around the table early on is so key, right? Like being clear on on what I call like your core values or your north star. It might sound fluffy, but actually it's not. So, and Roz and I, I feel like we did that very early on. We sat around her kitchen table and we said, "Okay, there's so many applications of this technology. How are we going to draw the line? How are we going to set boundaries?" And we came up with a set of core values that, in the hardest of times, we fell back on to determine how we make decisions. And so I feel like just getting clarity on these core, like for us, it was respecting people's privacy, only d engaging with industries where it's clear opt-in. So for instance, we don't do any work in security and surveillance. Um, so things like that, just getting, we very big on, you know, one of our core values is human connection and empathy, right? And that is, yes, it's an AI company, but it's about people. Well, these are all, they become encoded in how we act even even if you're a small, tiny team of two or three or whatever. Um, so I think that's another piece of advice. So what about finding people, hiring people? If you care about people as much as you do, like it, and it's, it's, it seems like such a difficult thing to, uh, to hire the right people. I think early on as a startup, you want people who have, um, who share the passion and the conviction because, because it's going to be tough. Like I have yet to meet, a startup where it was just a straight line to success, yeah. right? Even even not just startup, like even in everyday people's lives, right? So you always like ha run into obstacles and you run into naysayers. And um, so you need people who are believers, whether they're people on your team or even your investors. You need investors who are really believers in what you're doing because that means they will stick with you. They won't, they won't give up at the first obstacle. Yeah. And I think that's important. What about raising money? What about finding investors? Mm -hmm. First of all, raising raising money, but also raising money from the right sources, from that ultimately don't hinder you, but you know, yeah, help you, empower you, all that kind of stuff. What advice would you give there? You yeah. successfully raised money many times in your life. Yeah, again, it's not just about the money. Um, it's about writing, finding the right investors who are going to be aligned in terms of what you want to build and believe in your core values. Like for example, especially later on, like I, yeah, in my latest like round of funding, I try to bring in investors that um, really ca care about like the ethics of AI, right? And the alignment of, of vision and mission and core values is really important. It's like you're picking a life partner, right? It's the same kind of. So you take it that seriously for investors? Yeah, because right. they're gonna have to stick. You're with You're stuck you together <laughs> for a while, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> maybe uh, for, not for life, but for a while, for sure. Yeah. For better or worse, I forget what the the vowels usually sound like. For better or worse, no. That through we're, sick. Through, 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 through something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's 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 romantic and deep, and you're in it for a while. Um, so it's not just about the money. You tweeted about going to your first capital camp investing get together and, oh, yeah. and that you learned a lot. So this is about 
um, investing. Mm -hmm. So what what have you learned from that? What what have you learned about investing in general from both? Because you've been on both ends of it. I mean, I try to use my experience as an operator now with my investor hat on when I'm identifying companies to to invest in. Um, first of all, I I think the good news is because I have a technology background, right, and I really understand com- you know machine learning and computer vision and AI, et cetera, I can apply that level of understanding, right? Because everybody says they're an AI company or they're an AI tech. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Show me the technology. So I can do that level of diligence, which I actually love. Um, And then I I have to do the litmus test of, you know, if I'm in a conversation with you, am I excited to tell you about this new company that I just met, right? And and, and if I if I'm an ambassador for that company and I'm passionate about what they're doing, I, I usually use that. Yeah, I, that's important to me when I'm investing. So um, that means you actually can explain what they're doing and and you're excited about it. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for putting it so succinctly. <laughs> like <laughs> rambling, but exactly that's it. No, I but understand sometimes, it and I'm excited sometimes about it's it. Un- it's funny, but sometimes it's unclear exactly you, you, I'll hear people tell me, uh, you know, and they'll talk for a while, and it sounds cool, like they, they pay, paint a picture of a world, but then when you try to summarize it, you're not exactly clear of what, uh, maybe maybe what the core powerful idea is. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just build another Facebook, or um, there has to be a, there has to be a, a, a core, simple to explain idea that, yeah, that, then you can or can't get excited about, but it's, it's there. It's, it's sitting right. right there. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, but like, how do you ultimately pick who you think will be successful? It's not just about the thing you're excited about. Like, there, right. there's other stuff. Right, and then there's all the questions. You know, with early stage companies, like pre-seed companies, which is where I'm investing. Sometimes the the business model isn't clear yet, or the go-to-market strategy isn't clear. There's usually like, it's very early on that some of these things haven't been hashed out, which is okay. So the way I like to think about it is like, if this company is successful, will this be a multi-billion slash trillion dollar market, oper- yeah. you know, or company? And and so that's definitely a lens that I use. Um, what's, pre- what's pre-seed? What are the different stages? And what's the most exciting stage and what's... Or no, what's 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 interesting about every stage, I guess. Yeah. So pre-seed is usually when you're just starting out, you've maybe raised the friends and family round. So you've raised some money from people you know, and you're getting ready to for, to to take your first institutional check-in, like first check from an investor. And um I love this stage. There's a lot of uncertainty. So, so some investors really don't like this stage because the financial models aren't there. Often the teams aren't even like formed it's really, really early. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, it's it's like a magical stage because it's the, it's the time when there's so much conviction and so much belief, almost delusional, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? And there's a little bit of naivete around uh, uh, with with founders at this stage, and I just love it. It's contagious, mm-hmm. and um, I, I and I love I love that I can. Often they're first-time founders, not always, but often they're first-time founders, and I can share my experience as a founder myself, and I can empathize, right? And I can almost, I create a safe ground where, because, you know, you have to be careful what you tell your investors, right? And I will I will often, like, say, I've been in your shoes as a founder. You can tell me if it's challenging. You can tell me what you're struggling with. It's okay to vent. So I create that safe ground, Um and I think I think that's the superpower. Yeah, you have to. Uh, what I guess you have to figure out if this kind of person is going to able to ride the roller coaster, mm-hmm. of, uh, like of many pivots and challenges and all that kind of stuff. And if the space of ideas they're working in is is interesting, Correct. like the way they think about the world. Yeah, because it. The, if it's successful, the thing they end up with might be very different. The reason right. it's successful for. Actually, you 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 know, I was going to say the third criteria. So, so the technology is one aspect. The market or the idea, right, is the second, and the third is the founder, right? Is this somebody who I believe has conviction? Is a hustler, you know, is going to overcome obstacles? Um, yeah, I think that it is going to be a great leader, right? Like as a startup, as a founder, 
you're often, you are the first person and your role is to bring amazing people around you to build this thing. And so you're in an evangelist, right? So how good are you going to be at that? So I try to evaluate that too. You also, in the tweet thread about it, uh, mention, is this a known concept? Random rich dudes, RRDS. <laughs> okay. And saying that there should be like random rich women, I guess. Mm -hmm. What's the dudes? What's the dudes version of women? The women version of dudes, ladies. I don't know. I don't know. What? What's? What's? Is this a technical term? Is this known? <laughs> random well, rich dudes. Well, I didn't make that up, but I was at this capital camp, which is a get together for uh, investors of all types, and there must have been maybe four hundred or so attendees. Maybe twenty were women. It was just very disproportionately, um, yep. you know, a, a male, a ma male dominated, which I'm used to. I think you're used to this kind of thing. I'm used to it, but it's still surprising. Yeah. And as I'm raising money for this fund, so my 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 fund partner uh, is a guy called Rob May, who's done this before. So I'm new to the investing world, but he's done this before. Most of our investors in the fund are these. I mean, awesome. I'm super grateful to them. Random, just rich guys. I'm like, where are the rich women? So I, I'm really adamant in both investing in women-led AI companies, but I also would love to have women investors be part of my fund um, because I think that's how we drive change. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, that 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 takes time, of course, but there's mm -hmm. been quite quite a lot of progress. But yeah, for for the next Mark Zuckerberg to be a woman and all that kind of stuff, because that that's just like a huge number of wealth generated by right by women and then controlled by women and then allocated by women exactly. and all that kind of stuff. And then beyond just women, just broadly across all different measures of diversity and so on. 